Attention deficit hyperactivity disorder is the most common childhood psychological problem and is diagnosed in approximately 8% of the children in the USA. Actually, that's in Canada. Uh, it's characterized by over-alertness and nervousness, with affected children being fidgety and overstimulated. Paradoxically, the use of stimulant medications like Ritalin seem to be the most effective traditional treatment for treating ADHD symptoms. While these, sim- these uh, stimulants generally reduce the symptoms, clinicians have been concerned about their long-term effects on developing brains and on the risk of uh, drug addiction. A recent study by a Dr. Gloria Pillar of the Technion Israel Institute of Technology found what I've actually believed for years, that sleepy children, unlike sleepy adults, may exhibit hyperactive and attention deficit behavior. Instead of being just you know, allowed to be sleepy during the day, they, they're actually sort of self-medicating by stimulating themselves to stay awake. Evidence of this is found in the brainwave study showing that this hypoarousal of the frontal cortex and the central cortex of the brain. Over the last several years, uh, cl- several clinical studies have found that neurofeedback is an, is an effective non-invasive technique, so kids may not have to take these medications. The success rate using neurofeedback is approximately 75%, with a typical cost in the range of two to four to uh, four thousand dollars over 20 to 50 sessions. This is comparable to the cost of stimulant medications. An additional positive effect of neurofeedback training is that there seems to be an increase in patients' feeling of self-efficacy and control in the real world. It seems to be the fact that once you learn one skill that it generalizes. So this is an example of a neurofeedback session showing the clinician screen on the left and the patient screen on the right. So this would be on two different monitors, so the patient would only see this. And the goal is for the subject who is producing this uh, sensory motor rhythm activity, which is an activity from the cent- center of the brain, to suppress the sleepy activity and suppress the rumination, the, the higher frequency activity. And if he does that, his sailboat will win, and he'll continue getting points as it goes around. So we make it very, very simple for the, for the individuals to do the biofeedback. They can be as young as six years old. Watching 12-year-old Alex ride his bike, you never know he struggled with ADD. I knew that I had a problem, and I knew that I wanted to fix it. Outside of school, Alex was tired all the time. In school, he couldn't concentrate. I just couldn't get my, my thoughts out because I was always like staring off in the sleep. What we're trying to do with Alex is speed up the front part of the brain. Typically with attention deficit disorder, we have too much slow wave activity in the front of the brain. With the help of a listening tool and graphics, Alice can see and hear his brain waves and learns how to increase his own brain activity. That's exactly what we want to have happen to Alice. Several sessions later, Alice is able to concentrate again. Well, the brain will then learn, oh yes, when I'm reading or I'm doing homework, I'm supposed to speed up because he's getting the auditory uh, response. Over time, Alice won't need the high-pitched sounds to tell him he's on the right track. He's already noticed a difference from getting ready for school in the morning to, you know, to doing my homework and I can't name a thing to say that, that this training hasn't helped me. Alex has found his focus and a new friend. A testimonial. <laughs> a recent found, a study found that married couples who have a child with ADHD are nearly twice as likely to divorce by the time the child is eight than their couples have normal children. So it certainly seems worthwhile uh, to do all you can to help any family who has this problem. Autistic children also exhibit excessive slow frontal brainwave activity, although it's much more severe than in ADHD kids. The frontal lobes of the brain should normally produce dominantly fast-moving activity, which is associated with externalized thinking, abstract reasoning, and critical thinking outside oneself. Training involves suppressing this low frequency activity. When combining, with, when combined with other more standard interventions, it has been shown to be very effective in promoting a more normal, independent, and fulfilling life. In recent clinical trials, improvements are found in language, emotional and social skill deficits, as well as in attention and impulsivity. 
Another major health problem, as we mentioned before, is hypertension. It's estimated that approximately 60% of American adults can be classified as having prehypertension or hypertension. The highest risk groups include African Americans, the elderly, individuals with low socioeconomic status, and those who are overweight. While the prevalence of hypertension has increased 10% in the, last past, in the past decade, patient control hypertension remains low, with only about a 31% compliance rate to recommended treatments, either through medication or lifestyle changes. Several studies have shown that uh, biofeedback using muscle relaxation or hand and foot temperature warming can produce decreases in blood pressure to a normal range, coupled with a significant reduction or elimination of blood pressure medication. This is kind of important because there's often interactions between uh, blood pressure medication and other medications that you're taking. Another important area of biofeedback is in muscle re-education, uh, rehabilitation, re-education. Here, a feedback of muscle activity is used to lower chronic pain, alleviate and prevent migraine and tension headaches, eliminate bruxism, which is the clenching and grinding of the teeth, teach muscle strengthening, and to teach paralyzed muscles to regain strength after injury um, or stroke. Here's a screen showing how to use biofeedback for stroke rehabilitation or for muscle strengthening. So, um, this is uh, actually, we actually have a, you know, two video cameras that we can use at a time. And this, we've got one of the little webcams on the individual's arm. And so as the person's trying to move the paralyzed arm, we put electrodes here and then on the back. So this is the flexor muscle and behind is the extensor muscle. And the red here is the flexor muscle and the white is the extensor muscle. And you never want to see them happening going at the same time. Otherwise you're tensing and you're not going to get anywhere. So we teach, tell them, you know, hold, keep, that, keep the, um, the red low when the white is high and vice versa. And eventually what will happen initially with someone who's um, paralyzed is that you'll see very, very little activity, but you'll see something. And you just tell them, try to make that go up. And they just keep trying and trying. And because the brain is really plastic, it seems that even up to six years after having a stroke, that the brain can relearn control again. A fellow named Bernie Brooker, who uh, runs the uh, Miami Institute, Stroke Institute, who unfortunately just passed away, pioneered this work and was finding getting amazing results in people who had been paralyzed for years. Another example is the patellofemoral or knee pain syndrome, which affects approximately 25% of adults. As you can see in the photos, uh, patients train to increase what's called the vastus medialis to the vastus lateralis muscle so the inner thigh muscle to the outer thigh muscle. And they're doing this, by doing this with different exercises, you know, standing or sitting and trying to lay, raise or lower the leg. And this uh, our little gorilla has a ball that rolls back and forth, um, indicating which muscle is tensed more than the other. We tell them to just keep the ball slightly to the right. And so you can see the activity on, on the screen. And it, to enhance the activity um, <coughs> outside of the clinic, we can use a, portable, a little portable trainer and that, then the person can practice on their own. <clears throat> this is a very odd a application from our Japanese distributor. They connected a specially equipped calligraphy pen to our equipment to teach children with learning disorders and patients following strokes or injuries to develop or regain basic and eventually fine motor control. The system monitors heart rate and changes in the angle of the pen, which are displayed in our software. It was, we didn't dream this one up. We could never have. 